Hey developers, today I'm going to talk about hooks and how you can use that in your Vue.js application and when to use them and when not to use them. So let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I'm also a big Vue.js fan. I'm the author of the Vue.js in action book. So if you click in the description below, I actually have a link where you can get the first chapter for free. So right now there is an experimental Reacts hook implementation in Vue created by Evan Yu. It's called Vue Hooks, and it's more of a proof of concept, but I believe it will be added into Vue 3 when that comes out. But it's a way to add Vue Hooks in and I wanted to point out this really great article that Sarah Drasner created called What Hooks Mean for Vue. It came out on February 4th. And in that problem, in this blog, she mentions the problem that, especially in the Rack world with classes and the way that you have to pass, um, be able to reuse logic, you have to use render props or high order components. So you kind of get this pyramid of doom, she mentions. And that's why React Hooks was such a big an important step in the React ecosystem. However, on the Vue.js side, we don't use classes. I mean, you can, but we don't normally use classes. And we have something called mixins, which are used for composition when you want to take logic out of your components and be able to reuse them within your app. However, uh, mixins don't offer any way to pass information into them. So you can't like chain encapsulated logic you can't pass information from one hook to another. And so it's a little bit more limited. So that's what view hooks will actually take care of. So I went ahead and created an app here. It's really simple and I had a button that shows you some information if you have a mixin uh, from a mixin and another one from a hook. So you can kind of see the different styles of how you to do this. So I have the app open up here. And I thought I'd just uh, go ahead and get right into it. So here's my the data structure, or the structure of the app it, there, that is. I have the source folder, I have this hooks folder, where I have my hooks, I have mixins, where I have my mixins, and then I have my app.view, and I have a header view, which I don't know if we'll look at today, but and then I have a main.js file, which does what we need to do. So first thing to do is you can npm install view hooks, but make sure when you set it up that you put view.use hooks, otherwise nothing will work correctly. Make sure you have that added into your main file. Then inside your app, you can actually use this hooks method here. So I'll show you guys how that works. So I, I don't have anything in here, but I'll show you what looks like to do toggle. So I'm gonna create a toggle and it's gonna be really simple. So what this toggle does is I'll, it, this is what it does here. So all I have is a is showing property, which is set to false by default. And then it has a method called toggle show, which when you click on it, when this method gets, uh, when the, when you click on it or, or when you execute this method, it toggles is showing. So it just toggles it from false to true and true to false. And then if I wanted, and this is basically how mixins work. You can take any part of your logic that's in your Vue.js app and you can reuse it and put it in its own file here. And by the way, this, the state isn't shared in this. So if you had this is showing in a different component elsewhere, it's not going to share state with it at all. It's, it'll, it'll be unique. Now, if I go back to the app.view and I wanted to add it to my app.view, I just add mixins here at the bottom with this toggle. And then I can just put a button at the top here with an event for click that does the toggle show. And then I can have is showing displayed. If I want to show the opposite, I have opposite of is showing right here. So that's kind of the bottom of this, this part right here. So when I click on this, it turns it to true and false. If I click on it again, it goes to false to true. So that's what that does. So let's say I wanted to do something similar with hooks. Now there's a, there's a few ways to do this, but just for a quick show of, of what you can do, and by the way, like I said, if you guys want to see a more, um, a lot, much bigger example of multiple different hooks, I would highly recommend. I'll put in the description below Sarah Drasner's article here. But this is for a quick video. I just wanted to show something like this. 
So I have this hooks. I'm going to import in all my different values here from our view hooks. Then I'm going to export this function, which is, if you remember, if I go back to my tog to my app view here, I'm importing in this toggle hook. Make sure you don't forget the brackets because we're not exporting default on it. We're just exporting functions. So you can maybe have multiple functions in here you're exporting. And I have this const data here. So this is one way of, of adding data. It has this use data, which is once again coming from our view hooks. So I can use it with my existing view app. And I have this is showing. And what I'm doing actually, I can pass values in here. You can notice this toggle, I couldn't pass a value in. But the hooks I can. So I'm going to default the value to whatever I pass in here. And I can also pass things out of the, of, unlike a mixin, I can actually pass values out. Um, so now I have this opposite. So this is a computed property. So it just shows the opposite of it. And then I'm going to make sure that gets passed out. And then I can I have access to all the lifecycle hooks, just like I do with a mixin. So I can use mounted. I'm going to console log mounted. I have use updated, console log updated, and use destroyed. I can console log destroyed. And use effect. Now use effect is a little different. It's where you can put side effects in if you want some changes happening inside your hook. You can you can create this use effect. It, it gets triggered every time the component gets rendered. So there's our hooks there. So if I go back to my app view, uh, here's just, this is what I have in for my mix in here. But now I can create a hooks. So now this hooks method is something special. And this will get, basically, you can put all the diff your different custom hooks that you put inside this method here. So I'm also going to return it. So you could see, remember here, I have this return data opposite. That's how I get the values into my app.view file. I'm going to return the toggle hook. And then I can start actually doing the same thing here. So I have a, I have access to data, so I'm gonna just trigger it. When you do data is showing, it equals the opposite of it. I'm gonna just show it here on, this, on the page. And then I'm gonna do the opposite, which is showing opposite, which if you remember, opposite was here. We're returning it from the hook, and it's just a computer property that shows the opposite of it. So very contrived example, I know, but it shows you the power of hooks and how I can I can work with it. Now you're probably thinking, well, this is exactly the same as mixins. You didn't really accomplish anything, but I did do one thing you couldn't do with mixins, at least not as easily, is in here the toggle hook. I set it to true. So I'm going to save all my files here, which I have not done, and I'm going to reload this. And so you can see the default's true, opposite's false. It works fine, but I can go back into my app view and I can default it to false. Or I could have a completely new hook be passed directly in there. So now it's, if it starts off with false or true. So you can see there, so I've encapsulated all this data. Plus if you're coming from React and you're in this hooks mindset, this will make a lot of sense. You have this use syntax for everything. So that's, that's it. I mean, I can do some pretty complicated logic. I know in Sarah's program, Sarah Drasner's program, she was able to do all this, um, all this work inside one of her hooks for her mounted. So she created this prevent scroll. She has all this logic in there. She has all this use mounted information in here. And this acts, that's, this gets triggered on certain components that she adds it to. And it does all this this information and it adds all these prevent defaults. So she can do different types of scrolling. She just adds it in here. And then you can have one hook being passed into another, just like I did with just passing in just a true false. But she has a hook that calculated the inner width and then she returned that as data. And then that was able to be used in her other lo lo uh, logo lettering. So she basically past the width that she calculated in a different hook into this hook, and then she was able to use it. So you can see here, she was passing it right in here. So you can see that's the power of it. I mean, this is probably specific scenarios when you get large applications and you have a lot of, of different 
logic and you start noticing that you're reusing certain parts of the app, that's when you probably should start thinking about mix-ins. I probably wait a little bit longer to start using something like hooks in production, like Evan, you said, you probably this is more of a proof of concept, but it's certainly coming. And you can see how this could be really powerful. And if you think of some certain scenarios, let me know in the comments below where you would think this would be really useful. I think for now using toggle, using like mixins and just putting all separating, reusing your content in, in, into a mixin would be, would be fine. And obviously as we talk about this, don't get this confused with sharing state. That's where you would use something like Vuex or your props, or you can use scope slots if you want to kind of intermingle different components and different state between or logic between both of them. But this is more you're reusing like parts of your component. Like you want to take the data or your methods or computer properties that are very similar between multiple components and you want them to put them in one place so you can reuse them throughout the app. And once you get into more complicated scenarios where you have maybe some components that some some parts some components could be use other information from other components and you want to reuse it you might want to use something like hooks in the long term so i hope that kind of gives you a quick taste of of how mixins and how hooks work view hooks let me know in the comments below if you have any questions i'll try to answer them thanks